Electric Chariots, 140 pound bout. And there you see Mount Lousy is two years older. Both guys are 5'8. The arm length, which is measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. Malinaji with the one inch advantage. Edner Cherries, his first fight at 140 pounds and weighing in at 137 and a quarter pounds. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Paulie Malinaji Edner Cherry fight is scheduled for 10 rounds using the rules of the New York State Athletic Commission. The three knockdown rule is in effect. The doctor or the referee can stop the fight. In case the cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards if the four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell in any round, including the 10th and final round. Brian! Edner Cherry, originally born in the Bahamas in Nassau when he was 11 years old, he moved to Florida, Wachula, Florida, which is in central Florida. Looks, here's a guy who at 21, 4, and 2, he might not have the record of what an all-star fighter has, but he is an exciting fighter to watch in the ring. He's developed uh, quite the fan base. And, and, you know, and he's determined, and that's the main thing. He wants to be a champion, and he believes in, in himself, and he's got a great faith. So he just wants a chance to prove himself, and this is, you know, his first time boxing on HBO, and he wants to uh, display his talents. And, and you know, Lennox, you hear the crowd booing because Malinaji's a popular local fighter, but the only way anyone boos Edner Cherry is if they've never seen him fight and never talked to him. Because if you ever seen this guy fight or you had a conversation with or heard or him or heard him talk, there's no way you could boo him. A closer look at Edner Cherry now with Max. Very likable guy. And, and you're going to like watching him fight, too. His citizenship, he was not a United States citizen. It restricted his amateur career because he couldn't compete in international tournaments. Uh, so he had to turn pro earlier than he wanted to. He, he liked to have a more seasoned amateur background. He works for Royal Furniture, which he considers a step up from picking oranges down in Florida. And he's not a full-time fighter. Uh, he'd like to be. You know, right now he drives an hour and a half after moving furniture all day to the gym, works out hard, and then an hour and a half back home. They call him Little Holyfield because of that type of dedication. By the way, the only day he takes off during the week is Wednesday for Bible study and Sunday because it's the Lord's Day. And you know what? He, he's not obnoxious about his religion. He doesn't put it in everyone's face. He's just a deeply religious guy. Here's a man that the uh, crowd came come to see tonight here at the Hammerstein Ballroom. Paul Malinaji. He's got a little blue dye working tonight, Lennox, uh, on the quad. The interesting thing about Malinaji is he says it took the photo fight for everyone to say, you know what, because I went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him that I'm tough. But he says the fights that he had where he hurt his hand, even though they weren't the most exciting fights, those are the tough fights for him. Those are the fights where he, he says he's displayed his toughness because it continued. I know. The public is funny in that way, you know. That they said uh, my fight against uh, Klitschko was a great fight. And I'm saying, well, why was it a great fight? Was it because I got hit? And yes, it, people just like to see action, like to see you get hit. And uh, with Malinaji, they seen his toughness, and they kind of felt sorry for him in a way. And they showed, he showed that he had a great heart, and they loved that. Paul Malinaji sees himself as not only a fighter, but an entertainer. A closer look now with Matt. By the way, when I say Lord's Day, that's according to Edner Cherry. That's not religious commentary by me. Family feud, Paulie Malinaji and his brother finally sort of uh, tag-teamed his stepfather, who they never really cared for, and were subsequently thrown out of their house. Some family strife. He went from a street thug to Gleason's gym when he was kicked out of high school, living with his grandparents. His uncle took him to Gleason's gym. At the time, a uh, hotbed of uh, excellent fighters, including Zab Judah, Kevin Kelly, and others. Now he's one of those excellent fighters. You know, I hate to say it, every time a, a tall white guy can shoot from the perimeter, he's Larry Bird. Uh, Rocco Baldelli, Italian-American center fielder, he's Joe DiMaggio. He's an ethnic white guy, fights in the Northeast, doesn't hit with a lot of power. And so inevitably, I can't help it. He reminds me of the great Billy Kahn, light heavyweight champion, who gave a good, very good showing against the great Joe Lewis at heavyweight, much like Malinaji gave a very good showing against Miguel Cotto at junior welterweight. All right, now we're ready for the official introductions. Let's send it in to ring announcer Dave Diamante. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Hammerstein Ballroom at the Manhattan Center in beautiful New York City, 
It's time for us to witness a new chapter in the sweet science. 10 rounds of boxing in the junior welterweight division. Judges ringside, Billy Costello, Steve Epstein, and Tom Kazmarek. Your referee for this contest, Pete Santiago. Introducing the principals. First, to my left, fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the red trunks with the white trim. He weighed in at already 137 and one quarter pounds. He has a professional record, 21 wins, four defeats, two draws, and 10 big wins coming by way of knockout. He hails from Wachula, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Edmer Cherry Bob Cherry. Cherry. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner. He wears the blue and silver shorts. He tipped the scales at 139 and one half pounds. His professional record consists of 21 wins, only one defeat, and five big wins coming by way of knockout. From the beautiful borough of Brooklyn, New York, Bowie, the Magic Man, Malinaji. Malinaji. to you guys in the locker rooms. I expect you guys to listen to my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times, okay? This is good, and this is good, okay? Let's shake hands and good luck to both of you. I invoked the name of the great Billy Kahn moments ago by heavyweight champ from over half a century ago. Malinaji fights with the kind of pluck that Billy Kahn fought with. Like Kahn, didn't knock a lot of guys out, not a lot of punching power. Like Kahn, Charismatic and able to win over a crowd, he's gonna need it against an aggressive fighter, Edna Cherry. At the beginning of the bout match, uh, you mentioned that the Cherry's limited amateur experience, Malinaji, a U.S. national amateur champ, a New York Golden Gloves amateur champ in 2001 and 1998. Only five knockouts uh, on his record. Three of them coming in his first three fights. So just two in his last 19, but he attributes that to hand problems and also he says he's a boxer. Not a puncher. Speed is his game. And he's definitely showing it tonight. I mean, you know, even when he first came out with these couple jobs, they're quick. Speed is important. He also, now that you're looking at them together, I said that he doesn't really enjoy a size advantage, but he doesn't look as small as he usually does in there, does he, against the naturally, I guess, smaller guy, Edna Cherry. Don't cheer him, no, no, he look ripped up. Yeah, definitely been doing some work, some physical work, whether it's in the gym lifting weights, but they've been working. Cherry told us that he expects Malinaji to try to pot shot him and move on. So his goal is going to be to apply pressure and try to cut off the ring. <laughs> Cherry showing early on he's not afraid to engage. He says he would love to get Malinaji to just sit down and try to slug with him the way he ended up doing with Koto. Because Cherry thinks that's where you're going to win the fight. Nobody's really landed any telling shots yet. Well, I know you throw some good jabs, but they haven't landed flush yet. The right 
Right hand broke through Cherry's defense right there, but Cherry came right back. Oh, Malinaji catches Cherry, and Cherry says, got a bit of a chin. You see Malinaji not running. He's stepping into Cherry when he's throwing his punches, and he's following up his advantage when he hits Cherry. And that's the way you want to see a boxer box, not just hit and run, but stay in the pocket and fight at times. Malinacci displaying his speed, and Cherry trying to get close to him to let his hands go. Cherry left. And then later on, you see Malinaji using some quickness and getting in the left of his own. So Kupal tonight working with Buddy McGirt for the first time, as is Paul Malinaji. Now Pete uh, Santiago, the referee, on Malinaji's corner to... Uh, to clean up uh, some extra water. But just to get back to that point, Malinacci said that he felt he had the wrong game plan against Cotto. He says that his corner let him down. They never told him that he was in the fight. That's why he stood there and tried to trade with, with Cotto, and he felt he got some bad advice that had he been able to box him, he may, and he stressed, may have won the fight. Yeah, once more with Khan, and this will be the final time, Fran. I'm not suggesting that his talent level indicates that he will have a career like Khan did, obviously. That's, you know, one of the greatest of all time. But guys like that who don't score a lot of knockouts necessarily, but do hit hard enough to keep guys honest, can be very effective and can make for exciting fights. And the left hook that you saw Malinaji land last round might explain why Edner Cherry is not fighting with the kind of abandon that he at times, or that we've seen him fight with in the past. And Cherry said he wanted to be the aggressor, but it's uh, Malinaji dictating the pace. You were a fighter who definitely relied on his jab. How do you like the way Malinaji is throwing his out there? Malinaji is throwing a, a good, quick jab. He needs he needs to throw a stopping jab, like that that jab that stops you in your tracks. Right now, it's just that quick jab that kind of slaps you. Cherry unloaded with a, uh, a one-two. Here goes a couple power jabs. That was good by Malinaji. For a guy as quick as he is, Malinaji, and as aware as he seems to be, got hit pretty cleanly so far in this fight, at least three, four times. I would say you can't walk in the ring without getting wet. But he got hit with a combination of one-two there, and usually good defensive fighters avoid getting hit with that follow-up punch. That's a wake-up call for him. Break, break. No punches, no punches. Let him go. You know, most guys, when they get hit like that, you know, they realize, what am I doing wrong? I need to correct that. Jerry loves to feature the right hand, and he typically throws two. He likes the straight right, but he also likes the looping overhand right. Malinaji with a nice one-two. Looks like the hand's okay so far, that right hand. He's throwing it like he means it. Fight it out, guys. Fight it out. Break, break, break. Step back, guys. What else you notice about Malinaji when you get past the blue break, hair? Break, break. No punches. <laughs> is his eyes. Sugar Ray Leonard, Purnell Whitaker, a lot of... Box. 
real alert boxers. Their eyes are wide open and trained on their opponent. Malinacci has that same look. Yeah, he's, he's looking for a sign, any flicker. Any sign that his opponent's going to throw a punch. Okay, look here. This I need. This I need from the chair. I need from the arm. Sunday, April 15th, tune in to the premiere of our special four-episode countdown series, De La Hoya Mayweather 24-7. We'll take our cameras to Puerto Rico and Las Vegas for a revealing look at these two future Hall of Famers, both in the gym and at home with their families as they get set for their May 5th 154-pound championship. It's live on HBO Pay-Per-View. Your hands high. Okay, so don't aim for the head so much. Jab, jab, jab. Shoot, 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 the, shoot the right hand to the body. Okay? And then after you throw a combination, when he's getting ready to come, don't move. Faint. He'll stop right there in his track. You're not punching. Get this down. It's time to fight. It's time to fight, champ. It's time to fight. You understand? Bend me. Punch. HBO Sports in high definition welcomes you back in the Hammerstein ballroom. France Rawls alongside Max Kellerman and Lennox Lewis for our main event. Paul Malinacci taking on Edgar Cherry Bomb Cherry. Cherry trying to get in close there. Two fighters got tangled up. Cherry's definitely picked up the pace now. Looks like he means business in this round. Saku Powell brought in a uh, strength and conditioning coach. Edner Cherry brought in a nutritionist to try to gain, he said, the weight the right way. He usually fights at 135 pounds, trying to fight at 140 tonight. And Cherry believes his future is at lightweight. So he brought in a nutritionist to make sure that he gained the weight properly and also he can bring the weight back down. He said he had a good time eating six times a day. Cherry, who's at a physical disadvantage, at least in terms of his hand speed, is fighting very well. And no doubt that Malinacci getting off first with the jab and a nice quick short left counter there from Malinacci. Hey, break! No question. Break it. Lennox Paul, he told us that the uh, the fracture with his orbital bone wasn't really going to be a concern. We asked him, hey, what was it like for you the first time that you got in the ring to spar? And he said, you know, I didn't even think about it because as a fighter, normally I'm thinking about not getting hit in the face anyway. So, so he said he wasn't concerned about that. Do you buy it? A little bit. I mean, what happens when, you know, you get into a tough fight and your face is swelled up and everything? The box doesn't really realize it until you look in the mirror and say, oh, my, look at this. You know, I was really in the fight. But after a couple of days, I mean, that goes down and everything comes back to normal. So it really doesn't affect you in, in your next fight. But well, Lennox, he had to have something put in basically to keep his eyeball from falling out of his head. He had a plate and four screws. Well, it seems to be working for him. Doesn't seem like there's a problem with it tonight. At the very least, he said uh, he has experienced some frustration just with all the injuries. He's been a pro for nearly six years. Still, I only have 22 fights. You know, when boxers go through uh, situations like that, where there's always, you know, a problem uh, when they're training, all of a sudden they get injured, and then the fight has to get canceled. Boxers don't like that. But it happens, it's part of the sport. Tell me what's wrong. Talk to me. You saw me with my dad. You know, try to get in. You're, but you're getting in. You're not. You're, you're throwing at the head. I don't want the head. Okay. Pretend the head don't even exist anymore. Just bust that body, son. Sure. Let your hands go and let them go hard. You understand? That's not you. That's not you out there, man. You understand? Andy, listen to me, son. Okay? And touch him downstairs. Your baby, you're fine. You're fine. But what I want to do, I don't want you to. I don't want him to gain no confidence. Okay, and close the right hand, you throw a nice one-twos. Okay, come back with the hook. Come back with the hook, baby. All right, trust me. All right, even if you drop it downstairs, give it to me. Okay? Let's go. Let's go. 
CompuBox uh, average punches thrown thrown around here in the third round. Malinaji landing 16 of 57 for 28 percent. Cherry 13 of 45. Don Ali averaged 43 jabs per no round. Problem. Harold, how do you have it through three? Look at Fred, 30 to 27, three rounds to nothing. Paulie Malinaji. I tell you, Fred, I'm really impressed with that left jab. I mean, he's quick, he's got great legs, he gives you the feints, he gives you the head movement. But no, I, I get a kick out of Buddy McGirt in the corner calling for the left hook. If Paulie Malinaji tries a left hook, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to see it because he's doing too well with that left jab with the occasional, you know, straight right hand combinations. Three to nothing, Malinaji. Right. McGirt right. said, you heard him, he said, look, I don't want Jerry right. to get any confidence. You know, Harold brings up Malinaji's legs, and even though, well, and, and not even though, at, with like many boxers who move well, he has big, strong legs. Cherry, oh, good left hook. Cherry caught Malinaji with a left hook. Cherry got very good advice in the corner in terms of how to take away those legs. Stay with the body. I thought it was very good advice in Cherry's corner. It's the first time in Cherry's career, he's 21, 4, and 2, that he said he's actually had more than two months to train. He trained for about 10 weeks. Typically, he's used to training for just three weeks. So he said he feels a lot better. Plus, the fact that, you know, he was in training camp this time, he didn't have to drive that hour and a half to the gym after work, so that really helped him as well. You know, I, I like the way Cherry's Corner put it, too. Pretend the head doesn't even exist. Just stay with the body because Cherry needs to compensate for no Malinaji's natural advantage in athleticism. He has some quicker hands and, and better legs. And this is what a trainer's for. A trainer's supposed to see these things outside of the ring and tell, tell his boxer so his boxer can actually go in there and do it. Well, he is having some advantage going upstairs. He's catching ball. He's clean. How do you slow a quicker guy down? You go to work to the body. Yes, in fact, that kill the body and the head will die was Joe Lewis referring to Billy Kahn. What are you going to do to trap this guy? Kill the body and the head will die. Well, you know, when you're going after the body, you're going to get some punches trying to get in at the body. So there's risk involved. But doesn't Cherry have to accept some shots to the head in order to get into Malinaji's body? Malinaji's not a tremendous puncher, and, he, and, and Cherry being the less talented guy is going to have to give something to get something. Yes. It's something that Edgar yes, it does. Cherry Bomb Cherry has been doing uh, his entire career. I timed the question to Lennox at the end of the round, so all he can say is yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you got to take chances in there. It's very important. You got to take risks. Okay, Sam, very good. Very, very good. That was good. This is, what, this is what we need. This is what we need now, Sam. This is what I need from you. I need you to give me more hooks. So they're waiting for you. And stop pulling back. So you just catch it going straight back. With this from again, please. Okay, he's hitting you going straight back. All you gotta do is keep fainting him, get your combinations off. After you get the combinations off, step around to the side. Stop going straight back. Okay, don't let him get you. Let, you let your throwing. I, I asked you to throw and go to the body, and you stop. And you, you stop. You gotta, you gotta go to the body. Make him think it's the body first. Throw the chest. Then we go on top. Throw the jab to the chest, Eddie. Okay, sons? All right? Jab to the chest, Eddie. Please. Too many people talking, guys. Too many people talking. We're in the fifth round of a scheduled 10 round junior Walter Wade matchup between Paul Malinaji and Edna Cherry. So far, Malinaji has worked his speed to his advantage while Cherry has tried to find a way to get inside and unload power shots. After uh, Lennox, a, a battle like the one that Paul Malinaji had with Miguel Cotto, could have taken a quote unquote easy fight. Uh, your thoughts just on, on him stepping up here and taking on Andrew Cherry? No, um, he's. 
He's got confidence in himself. He felt that that fight was a learning process. He learned a lot from that fight, and he just wanted to get back in there. He, you know, he wanted to get back in there and, and, and practice the stuff that he learned. And he, you know, what he did, he just go back to the gym. Go back to the gym, went back to the basics, and he's still got a lot of confidence in his ability, and he wants to prove to the world that he's a great champion. And, and though, Cherry, there's a lot to like about him as a fighter and as a person. Let's not overstate it. If he wants to fight in a main event on Boxing After Dark, he has to fight a guy at least as dangerous as Ed Edner Cherry, which he has done. And he's dominating the fight, as Harold mentioned, on the jab. The question is, can he be more than a local attraction as a guy who dominates fights with his jab? Cherry, though, did a nice job of catching Malinacci with a long right hand. This is going to be the challenge for, for Cherry to move the fight out of the center of the ring, to cut off the ring. You know, fans love to see speed, love to see quickness, and malachi has got all that. They also like to see power, though, Lance. Power. What equals power? Speed and weight. But he's 140 pounds. <laughs> Paulie Malinaji mentioned that if his right hand is feeling good, he won't have to just kind of win the fight on the jab. I wonder how his right hand is feeling at this point. Early in the fight, it looked okay, but over the last several rounds, He's not throwing it much, is he, Lennox? He's not throwing it that much. Maybe he may have injured it, but he is throwing a lot of jabs. He should be mixing up those jabs. He should be throwing jabs, hooks, and uppercuts with that left hand if that right hand hurts. Well, he came up uh, nicely there with two right hands after a wild right from Cherry. You okay, Papa? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I mean, we're not gonna we're not gonna win like this. We came here to win. We didn't come to lose. You understand? We're five rounds down. We're doing fine there. before. We're five rounds down, son. I mean, any if you let your hands go, we win the fight. You understand? This guy, this guy just pot shot in here. I, I, what I don't understand, explain to me. What I don't understand is that we train. Close the hand, baby. Come on, man. You can do it, champ. Okay? You're doing good in camp with it. You can do it. Give me that hook in there. Okay? Come on, baby. Just keep doing it. As you fade them, keep them going back. Okay? And this little close and time that jab and give me a nice right hand over it, left hook. Okay? All right, baby. Very good, champ. Go. Second Stay focused, Paul. Stay focused. Guys, you heard Pete Fernandez uh, tell Edner Cherry there that uh, he believes he's he's lost all five rounds here of the fight. And, and one of the concerns that they told us about as well is that they believe that Edner takes some time off during fights. He takes rounds off that his focus sometimes isn't as sharp as it should be. And their main point was we want Edner to stay busy, to stay busy. And we haven't seen that tonight. It's difficult to stay busy when a guy's faster than you because you're always afraid that he's going to hit you. Malinaji threw five rounds as a 54 to 30 edge and jabs that have landed. Now he's throwing the right hand more, but I suppose, Lennox, that the idea in Cherry's corner is, yeah, M Paulie's going to hit him, but if they exchange and they catch each other in the exchange, Cherry's the harder puncher. And has better chances in those under those circumstances. And you saw another uh, another stitch there to Cherry's game. He switched to southpaw momentarily. No punches, no punches. We see Paulie now using the right hand more, Lennox. But if it is bothering him, how does he throw? You know, what does he do to uh, well, what keep it Cherry is, off him? What it, well, he still, if he if he hurt that right hand, if he's hurt his right hand, he should still throw it, but not throw it to hit. Uh, Cherry. Throw it to Miss Cherry so he can come back with that left hook or left uppercut. And it's all down to the biomechanics of, of, of his actions when he throws that combination. So he's used to throwing the combination and therefore he'll be more likely to land his left hand in other forms than the jab if he throws the right hand just yes. mechanically. Yes, throw even it, if he, miss even it. Even if he intentionally misses it. Intentionally miss it if it hurts and come back with that hook. We 
haven't seen Malinaji shake his right hand or really give us any indication that it is necessarily hurt. So. That's true. We're looking for it because we know of his history, but it seems to me, and he has thrown a couple, seems to me he hasn't thrown many in the last several rounds. And let me tell you, if you have a history of hurting your right hand, your job is going to be good because anytime your right hand's hurt, you have to use the other hand, so you always practice with, you know, you can't take too much time off of the gym and you, you have to go back in the gym, and that's what you have to practice, that jab. Lennox, it's tough to press the action with a guy as fast as, as Paul Malinaji. Well, Ch Terry's backing up. I don't know why. He should be going forward, but he seems like he's waiting for a counter punch. And uh, I know it's difficult when a guy ha! is faster than you. Boxing after dark coming to you from New York City, a triple header tonight. And there you see the gorgeous New York City skyline. Temperatures are dipping below the freezing mark. But it's heating up inside here at the Hammerstein Ballroom here in the final fight. We saw a quick uh, first round knockout in our opener, Andre Berto taking out Nito Bravo, and then Saku Pao winning a unanimous decision. Beautiful. This is the move. Over you back Issei with the jab, Smith. It's easy night for you. Don't make it harder. When you back up, you make it harder than it has to be. All right, he's still going for the fake. Beautiful hook, give me some more, okay? Very good, baby. He's trying nice and relaxed. Just keep this tempo. It's your show, baby, okay? You work hard for this. Listen to me. Faint, faint, faint. Keep fainting, baby. He's gonna work all night long. The seventh round here of a scheduled 10 rounder. Carol Lerman, how do you have it scored through six? Terribly hard fight to score. 60 to 54, six rounds to nothing, Paulie Malinaji. I gotta tell you, Fred, this guy is an expert with that up jab. In other words, Paulie drops that left hand way down, brings it up, just whops and the cherry in the face with that left jab. Didn't want to interrupt Pete Santiago here, but Cherry's got to pick up the pace. So far, he hasn't been able to hit the guy with a tennis racket. I mean, he's got to start landing some punches to get back in his fight. Six to nothing, Malinaji. And you can see uh, he is actually trying to pick up the pace here in the seventh round. But he has largely ignored the advice of his corner. In the early rounds, you got to put that work into the body in order to bring that up to the head late in the fight. And because he didn't put the work into the body early, it's now not paying dividends. Paulie's legs are still fresh. I mean, he tried to do it, but... Do you think he did? He, he tried to do it, but Paulie's just a bit too quick. Do you really think he made a concerted effort to go to the body? I think he did. I mean... I didn't see it. It looked like that to me. I mean, you can try to go to a person's body. Whether you can get there or not is the question. Yeah, that's right. Usually, <laughs> it's true. The saying is, you know, the head moves, the body doesn't. But Paulie's body moves pretty good, too, on those legs. Malinaji, born in Brooklyn, spent uh, six years growing up in Sicily. Returned back here, and he says, about 10 years ago, he came to a fight at the Garden between Prince Nassim Hamed and Kevin Kelly. And he knew right then, after he saw that, he was hooked. He loves Ahmed, flashy style. He adopted a little of that. And he is very conscious of trying to be a crowd-pleasing fighter. If he adopts uh, some of Kevin Kelly's substance... Marlon Nudge has got great leg movement. I mean, the way how he keeps his legs... Firm on the ground, good movement. He does have substance. It's not fair to, uh, to kind of categorize him as a guy who's uh, sizzle and not steak, as I mentioned at the top of the show. But 
he needs to consistently apply that out of the ring charisma in the ring. And if he can't do it as as uh, comprehensively as he might otherwise because his right hand is hurt frequently, well, that's going to be a problem in his career. Tries to load up there with the right hand. He misses Cherry. Cherry trying to engage at the end. And I'll tell you what Malinaji has. He's got great foot movement, and that's what you need to be a great boxer. One thing I want you to do for me. Uh -huh. Straighten that right hand out. Okay? Everything else is fine, baby. Your hands like you can try to get around. No, 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 no. Listen, 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 listen. When you back him up with the straight jab, shoot the right hand. He got his hand up, shoot the right hand. He drops some downstairs. Okay? okay? Everything is fine, baby. How you feeling, champ? You talk to me. Okay, listen to me. You're putting on a nice show, but now I want you to go with the fans and back them up. Yes, sir. Listen. Just keep doing what you're doing. That's all you got to do. Okay? A little more combinations now. Okay, when he gets his... Ever. You won't hit him with that. Right. And it's the left... I told you it was the left hook. Load up on that left hook, son. We got nothing to lose. Let's Load up. Let's, let's knock him out. Load up. Okay, his hands out. Malinaji winning the uh, fight and jab share, averaging uh, 36 per round, landing 10. Cherry averaging 27, and the landing 5. And Fran, maybe you're right. Maybe we're just looking for it because Malinaji, when he was told to throw the right hand, did not mention anything about it bothering him. And in Edner Cherry's corner, we, we heard him. We heard the corner man say, "You have, we have nothing to lose." And we mentioned that Cherry would be fighting that way. He has not fought like a guy with nothing to lose. Hasn't fought terribly, but not like a guy with nothing to lose. And he's still in he's still in good shape. I mean, he's not breathing hard. There's still a lot of energy left in him. Hometown crowd trying to give Paul Malinaggi a lift here at the Hammerstein Ballroom. Channing Pauly, Pauly in the eighth round here. With those eyes. Another good thing Malinaji does is that upper body, upper body, body movement. You know, he's not a standing target. That's why he's not easy to hit. If Although a little bit easier to hit than I anticipated tonight. Cherry has been able to land cleanly and sometimes in combination right on Malinaji's chops. Max, let's talk about uh, the 140-pound division. Uh, where do you see Paul Malinaji's future? Well, certainly not at welterweight, so you're right, at junior welterweight. He has called out Ricky Hatton. He feels he's on that level. You know, the way Ricky Hatton's looked recently, maybe he is. Ricky Hatton has not looked dominant recently. Um, I think if Malinaji wants to be taken seriously as an elite fighter, not just a local attraction, he has to do a little more than he's done tonight. This certainly doesn't eliminate him from that kind of consideration, but it's not as though especially on a card where Andre Berto blows a guy out. He's what everyone's going to be buzzing about on Monday. Keep in mind, and we mentioned it at the beginning of the fight, Cherry is normally a 135-pound fighter and plans to stay there. So he basically had the opportunity to come up to 140 before this bout, and he took it. Malinaji had a couple situations there he could have thrown the right hand but decided against it so this is a situation where now he's, he's got the fight won he should really be working and setting traps for cherry what trying to catch traps? you know right now he's got him backing up set him up for some these power shots his sweet shots those shots that he wants to catch cherry with whether it's the hook or the right hand so in other words let cherry come at him extend himself and then counter with something hard yes malinacci too fast for cherry for yet another round Edney, i've done my job so give me that let me have it I've done my March 10th, job. Vladimir Klitschko defends his heavyweight title against Ray Austin live from Germany at 4.45 Eastern. And again at 10 Eastern and Pacific. Immediately following both airings, stay tuned for Countdown to Barrera Marquez. A documentary-style look into both fighters' camps as they prepare for their March 17th 130-pound battle live on HBO Pay-Per-View. For whatever reason, I don't know what the reason was. You understand? There's nothing I can do. Come on. 
I can, son, all I can do is be here for you. That's it. All right? You're the only one that can go in there. And I told you from the beginning that it was a left hook. Deep breath. I told you. Great job. Keep the face. Stay focused. Okay? He's going to get desperate now. You stay focused. CompuBox punched that numbers in round eight on Aji, landing 10 of 43. Cherry throwing just 30 and landing nine. 30 punches around is not going to get it done for Edner Cherry. Fran, you asked about the junior welterweight division. The one and only true legitimate junior welterweight champion of the world is Ricky Hatton. Paulie Malinaji, I don't think he's that interested in picking up one of those meaningless belts. He wants to fight the champ. And the fact is, as, you know, Malinaji kind of markets himself as this charismatic, flashy boxer, isn't always overly exciting in the ring. Good, good exchange. And let me tell you, when Ricky Hatton markets himself as this action fighter, but he's also always not, not always that exciting in the ring. Kind of dull at times, just because he's coming forward still holding and, and mauling more than punching. And I, I, Mon actually have a good shot at Ricky Hatton, I think. Lennox. I think it'll be a good fight. Marlon Hodges got good speed, but and he's got good no movement. No and uh, Ricky Hatton comes straight at you, and that's what uh, a good mover loves. Loves a, a boxer coming straight at you so he can counter punch you and take you out. But could he could he hurt Ricky Hatton? Let's go, let's go. This is the question. Ricky Hatton's got a tough chin and he's a right. tough, no tough like hombre. But the so way it's Ricky Hatton is not easy to hurt him. He jumps in on a guy, Lamb throws one or two punches, usually to the body, and then ties him up. I mean, so maybe Malinaji can't hurt Hatton, but is Hatton really looking to hurt Malinaji? Then it's a matter of who's landing the cleaner shots throughout the fight, or now, more of them. Now it's down to the pressure. Pressure can break a pipe. And Hatton gives you enough pressure in a fight to worry about. So, it's, you know, most boxers get in that survival mode because they can't take that type of pressure or even work rate by Ricky Hatton. Two years ago, I'd agree with you about Hatton, Lennox, in that respect. Nowadays, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure Hatton's applying effective pressure nowadays. Anyway, it's an interesting fight. Pete Fernandez uh, trying to implore Edna Cherry between rounds. The left hook, he said, that's where it's at. We saw Cherry at the beginning of the round. Uh, rip off two. That connected, but it's been non-existent since. Another thing Malinaji does well is, he, you know, he doesn't allow you to catch him on the ropes. Anytime his back touches the ropes, he's off of it. He's, he's turning you, he's twisting you. He doesn't like to be on that ropes, and, you know, that's a mark of a good boxer right there. Maybe another reason that Cherry has not been able to go effectively to the body. Malinaji's not on the ropes, and so he's not stationary. Another intriguing wrinkle in a happy matchup. I think the question long term for Paul Malinaji is at what point will his lack of punching power be a detriment to him and has not been an issue tonight. I think he makes up on that on other things. The fact that he's got good movement, up, upper body movement, good feet movement. They're always in, in that, on good balance and uh, a great fast jab and punching combinations. Touch him up. Give me that for three minutes. Okay? Off the faint. Every time you faint, give me a different combination. It's last round. When you're punching, he's not going to do nothing. Every now and then, he's going to try to throw a bomb. Okay? All right? Let's start. You understand? No, we didn't. And he ain't. He ain't, son. You understand? You got to die in there. You got to die in there. Edney. For your mom, for everything. In there. Let's go. You got to let him go, son. For your sister, baby. I told you in training camp it was a left hook. Paul Malinaji admitted to us has been frustrating with the, the three hand surgeries and then he fractured his orbital bone in his last fight against Miguel Cotto. Malinaji getting a shot here. Referee warning Cherry for punching in the back and yes he was punching in the back you know. It's not really good. He's supposed to be punching on the front side of the body. Well Paulie does angle his body so 
Sherry's taking what he's given, I guess. Well, I know if he does that again, the referee's definitely going to take a point away from him for that. You know, Malinaji, you mentioned the heart that he's shown Fran against Kodo. He also showed a really good chin, because Kodo is a devastating puncher. And here in this fight, though he hasn't been caught with anything huge, he has been caught cleanly and apparently not bothered. And right there is an example of it. There was a nice left, left hook. hook. Got a good chin, Malinaji. Cherry. Cherry certainly uh, realizing that he is behind on the scorecards. And if he's going to have a chance to win this bout, he's going to have to get a stoppage like he did in his last fight against Daniel Alise in the 12th round. Buddy McGirt warned him that uh, Cherry's going to be looking to land one of those Cherry bombs in this round, and that's what Malinaji should be waiting for. Cherry has just 10 KOs. In 27 fights. Again with the hook landed on the chin, friend. Lance, why didn't we see more of this earlier from Edna Cherry? Well, Edna realized this is the last round, and it's, he has to go for broke. And, uh, you know, when you have to go for broke like that, you, you know, you're putting a lot of pressure on yourself. But, you know, it's, you only have three, three rounds, three minutes in there, so you have to make the best of it. Big right hand lands from Edna Cherry. To the chin of Paul Malinaji. Malinaji's head has been a little too easy of a target tonight for a guy who hasn't thrown a ton of punches. His opponent has not thrown a ton of punches. He's not the most accurate puncher in the world. Malinaji's considered a defensive fighter, and uh, yet he's been caught cleanly throughout. Not, not a ton of times, but enough to make you wonder why he's getting caught that cleanly. Well, the, the punches don't affect him. Basically, they, they, he just makes them roll off like they're they're nothing and and uh, and his face is look, is holding up very well so it shows those punches are not really having too much of an effect the cherry bomb waiting for the tenth round to detonate but the speed of Paul Malinaji earlier in this fight most likely will prove to be the difference for Paul Malinaji, the question becomes great show, man. What great show. Bigger fights are on the horizon for him. Paul Malinaji looking to go to 22 and 1. And trying to come back with a victory after losing to Miguel Cotto. You're not worried about the power, you like the speed and the footwork. Speed and weight equals power. And there you see how Harold Letterman uh, has the fight run. It's almost a shutout for Malinaji. He gave uh, Cherry the 10th and final round. Cherry waiting a little too late to try to get off. Let's take a look at the uh, judges for this bout. And Billy Costello with three title fights. And he scored in favor of Graham Kuloff in this Casamayor draw. Steve Epstein from Connecticut, 13 title fights. And he scored for Bird over Bird's decision victory over Okendo. And finally, Tom Kazmarek, a, a veteran judge of New Jersey. And he had the uh, Rockman Tony fight dead even in a draw. Difficult for Edna Cherry to try to neutralize uh, Paul Malinacci's speed. But definitely. A hometown crowd for the Brooklyn native. He even threw a couple of hooks. With the blue hair. We didn't talk much about the blue hair. What did you think about the blue hair, Alex? Yeah, but you know, <laughs> you know, if somebody came in the ring with me with blue hair, you know, it, it wouldn't really distract me. It'd be a trouble, huh? It just gives me a better target. You know, hey, go after the Smurf head. Well, that's not a Smurf in there. That's Mr. Magic Man. <laughs> Malinaji 
SEC. Down there in Florida, baby. Very relaxed. Let's get it into uh, Dave Diamante with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Billy Costello sees this contest 98 to 92. Steve Epstein scores this contest 100 to 90. Tom Kazmarek sees this contest 98 to 92. All for the winner, by unanimous decision, Holy the Magic Man! So Paul Malinaji wins the unanimous decision here at the Hammerstein Ballroom. Tom Gasmerick calling it a shutout. Beating Edner Cherry. And this time the judges agree with our Harold Lutterbill. Let's take a look at the uh, final punch stat numbers and the, the total punches first. Malinaji was busier throughout the fight, throwing 50 or so more punches and landing 16 more than Edner Cherry. Cherry tried to pick it up late in the fight and Cherry actually threw the power punches were where Cherry was trying to uh, take advantage, but it was really the jab that was the difference and the quickness and the speed of Paul Malinacci. He shows some great quickness, some great speed, some good ring generalship. You know, he, wasn't, he didn't allow himself to get caught on the ropes. Great upper body movement, which was very apparent in the fight. And, uh, you know, I didn't think he got hit that much, but uh, he def his definitely his face showed that he didn't get hit that much. So uh, he did a good job in my eyes. All right, Max Kellerman standing by uh, with the winner, Paul Malinacci. Congratulations, Paulie. Virtual shutout. Give yourself a grade. Um, I think it could have, you know, we talked about this morning. I had to make it a little exciting sometimes, but sometimes I guess the, the situation doesn't warrant it, uh, so to speak. You know, if I made it exciting with this guy, I would have gave him a chance to hurt me and possibly knock me out, you know. Uh, coming off the last fight, which was a very physical fight, I felt like I needed to show him a little bit more boxing and, uh, you know, just make sure I had everything together and, uh, you know, make sure mentally I came back the right way. So I, I made it boring sometimes, but I felt like that was the way to go tonight. You seemed to throw fewer right hands as the fight went on. How did your right hand feel? Uh, it was a little sore, but nothing crazy. I mean, I've heard it much worse. It's not hurt. I don't want to say it's hurt because I know what it's like if it to be hurt. It's not hurt. Just uh, sometimes it felt a little sore. So I, I, I felt I played safe. I felt like I was holding him off with the jab the right way because he was being a little uh, uh, over, uh, he was overexerting himself at times. So I felt like the jab, he, I could just walk him into it and pace myself. Edner Cherry is a good puncher. You can see he's a cut-up guy, and he hit you cleanly a, a couple of times. A yeah. little more than we're used to seeing you get hit cleanly. Did you feel his power? Uh, in the last round, he caught me with a good right hand. Um, I don't know if you guys you guys probably remember it. Well, but None of those hooks hurt you? Nah, because a lot, a lot of them I think I caught on the gloves or they were grazing because I turned a lot with those hooks. Uh, but the right hand, I think, he caught me behind the ear, so um, I felt that a little more. Nothing that ever hurt me crazily, but I felt his right hand in that last round. Ringside, we were discussing you and Ricky Hatton. Care to comment? Uh, I think I need to show a little more to be Ricky Hatton. Um, I definitely got to uh, maybe pick up the pace a little bit. You know, I think this was a fight where it was more for my confidence than anything else coming off that physical performance with Cotto. So maybe uh, I could show a little more in the next fight to maybe warrant to fight with Ricky Hatton. He's a good fighter. Definitely want to fight him. I, I, I talked to you guys this morning. I said I want to test myself against the best of my era. But a performance like tonight, I don't think uh, will convince many people of a fight with Ricky Hatton and me. Uh, it was a smart performance, but I think I need to push myself just a little more to get in there with Ricky Hatton. Congratulations and thanks, Paulie. No problem, guys. Thanks for having me. Fran. Sorry, Max. Uh, thanks very much. And, Lance, I like the honest assessment that we just heard there from Paul yeah, Malinaj. I mean, he, he didn't he only won the fight unanimous decision. He didn't try to say that he looked spectacular. And he said, you know what? I'm not quite ready for Ricky Hatton. You agree? I agree. I mean, there's still a lot of work to be done, and he knows what he needs to do in there. And uh, it's great that he recognizes it. And the main thing that he has to do is just go and do it, work in the ring, and, till, and wait for that important fight against Ricky Hatton if, it's, if it so comes. What does Paul Malinaj have to do to get himself at that elite level of fighter at 140 pounds. I mean, he's on the right track right now.
now. Uh, having hand injuries always are concerning to boxers because they're never really at their full potential. And when they when they throw a fight when they throw a right hand in there, there's always a twinge or that fact that they may hurt it. So that's always in the back of your mind. So it's always concerning to a, to a fighter that has hand injuries. All right, Max, uh, you just to talk to him, and he said he's not going to lean on the excuse of his hand bothering him tonight. But the honest assessment there at the end, were you surprised that uh, basically told you the truth and what he felt? Yeah, because he's right. We were talking Ricky Hatton because um, Ricky Hatton is vulnerable, although he is the champion of the world. And uh, Paulie's been talking Ricky Hatton, and Paulie's been on national TV many times at this point in his career. And here he is headlining a boxing after dark after appearing on HBO against Miguel Cotto. So, yeah, given those circumstances, it was a surprising answer from Paulie Malinacci, but an honest one. How much demand will there really be to see him in against an elite guy off of a performance like this? But then that's saying something, because he did shut out a world-class fighter, not a world beater, but a world-class fighter. And uh, when you can shut out a world-class fighter, essentially, and still consider it a, a sort of disappointing performance, that speaks to the level that you're on, and Malinaji's on a pretty high level.